What's happening everyone? Welcome back to another fantasy puck video. Today's gonna be a little bit different uh, than the usual videos you see. Um, it's gonna be me and Chris here. We're gonna be talking about um, some really important strategies that uh, you might not be using in your fantasy leagues uh, that we're gonna tell you guys today that'll help your team uh, push you to the top and make you a championship team. Um, there's just a few things we wanna run through today. Um, we think that's important for you to note uh, every day when you're making your lineups or you're drafting your teams or making trades making pickups on waivers. There's a few things we want to run through that we think are that people are kind of overlooking in fantasy that are important strategies to bring your team to the top. Um, so the first thing we want to start with is don't make, don't panic. Um, so one thing I've, I've noticed in a lot of the comments in my videos is that uh, the good example is using Pittsburgh, right? People are saying, do I trade Malkin? What's happening with Malkin? What's going on with Gensel? I'm looking to trade Gensel. You just got to relax. Like you took those guys in the second round, you took Gensel in the third round, maybe the fourth. Um, there's no need to drop them. You drafted them that early for a reason. There's, they're high upside players. You got to look more into them. Evgeny Malkin has never been under a point per game. He's been under a point per game one time in his career. Uh, just because he doesn't have a point in the first four games doesn't mean he's a bust this year. He still has a ton of upside. The Penguins are still good. And the same thing goes with, with Gensel. Just because he didn't score in the first four games Maybe Pittsburgh's off to a slow start. Maybe things aren't clicking. There could be issues in the room. Um, they also played against Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is probably one of the best teams in hockey this year. They're going to be running down teams uh, nonstop. So then that's the first part of the panic. Um, I'll let you chime in here in just a second. I just want to talk a little bit about um, the waiver wire. So something I've noticed, a big theme, is that um, the good example is Joel Farabee. So Farabee had four points, I think, the second game of the year. First game, he was shut out. And 30% of people picked him up on ESPN. And I get it. You know, he's playing on the second line. He's playing with Giroux and Hayes. It's a good line. But don't be dropping the players you took in the 10th round to pick up Joel Farabee. He only played 14 minutes. And that's something we'll get to like uh, down the list here is his minutes aren't there. He's playing on the second power play unit. He got four points, and, and it happens. There's outlier performances that are going to happen every year with maybe the players you draft, players that you pick up. Um, but it was just an outlier performance, and people are dropping, uh, for example, like, like Bo Horvat. They'll drop Bo, Bo Horvat to pick up Joel Farabee, where it's someone you took in the 10th round that you liked this year, but because he didn't get a point in the first three games, you dropped him for Joel Farabee. When down the road, uh, it, it's very likely that uh, Horvat's going to outscore Farabee at the end of the year. So... Um, I think that's just the first strategy we want to get to. I'll let Chris uh, chime in here to talk a little bit more about it. But um, that's just something I've noticed as a theme for majority of people, and especially people that are new to fantasy. Yeah, guys, I get it. Like, it's it's a short season, like, we're, but we're only four games in. So, like, relax. You, you don't need to panic sell your players if they're not hitting the production that they thought you were going to get. So I, I get that everybody wants to get that like Dominic Kubalik player, that guy who's just seemingly pops out of nowhere and gets 30 goals. Like I, I, t I totally understand that, but you, you got to remember that you have to look at the caliber of player that you're dropping. And if, if it's a guy like Mike said, like Faraby, who isn't going to see a lot of the top six minutes and, and Philly's a pretty deep team. I'm, I'm not saying that Faraby's he's, he's not a good player by any means, but if you're if you're looking to drop like a Bo Horvat, a guy who was just absolutely lights out in the playoffs last year, especially who's playing power play one with Hughes, Patterson, JT Miller just came back into that lineup as well. Like you got to just think of the caliber of player and why you drafted him in the first place, right? Like and Malkin's had a slow start. We know this, and but does that mean I'm I'm gonna drop Malkin for Maxime Comtois because he has three goals in four games? No, no. And I, and I get that you guys want to find those those stream players uh, every week. Those of you that are doing like daily uh, head to head games and stuff like that, I, I get that. But you, you got to make sure that you're not overselling or, or overreaching on these these players that have had hot starts and these players that have had slow starts mm -hmm. you, you just you kind of got to ride it out it's it's way too early to tell I, I get that it's a short season but like just just don't panic right yeah yeah like the biggest thing is like uh if you're trading someone like malkin who you drafted in the second round or third round look to trade for value that if that person, say he took Couturier in the third round, like that's a fair trade because, you know, they both have the upside this year to be drafted that early. 
So don't be giving away your second and third round picks for players that were drafted seventh, eighth round. And connect me is the example I want to use where I, I had a question about, should I trade Malkin for connect me? If you go look at the history, Malkin has been way better in his career. Um, and you took him in the second round. So it's, it's hard for me to justify why you should trade a second round pick for someone that went in the eighth, ninth round. But again, there are outliers. Um, one example is uh, Matt Barzell a couple of years ago. Uh, he wasn't even drafted in, in most leagues. I remember in my league, he was actually a waiver wire pickup. But there are going to be players that do have first, not first round value, but I'll say like third to fifth round value that might, might go undrafted this year. That, and that happens, and I understand. But I think the biggest thing is just just don't panic. You drafted those players for a reason. Um, and they're going to be good for you down the road in the end. Um, so the second thing I want to talk about is to look at minutes for players. So that is the number one most important stat to look at for players you pick up, deciding if you want to trade a player for almost every aspect of fantasy hockey, minutes, minutes, minutes. And I'm going to stress this. You've heard it in my videos. You hear it on my streams. It's all about the minutes. Um, if a player is playing 14 minutes a night and you trade them for someone that's playing 20 minutes a night, the player that's playing 20 minutes a night has six more minutes a game to score, to shoot, to block, to hit. So that's the one thing you need to keep your eye on. And I'm going back to the Faraby example again, where I didn't make a video on him about, about picking Faraby up just because I, I wasn't too excited about him playing 14 minutes. And like, like if you see him playing up in the 20 minute range, then yeah, go for it. Like that's a sick pickup. He's getting, that means he's getting power play time. He's getting time on the first line. Um, so that's the one thing I want to stress. And it's, it's more, uh, important to look at that for D because I find D in fantasy hockey is really, it's really thin. Like it's hard to find good D and I'm sure a lot of people have run into that problem. Some of you might have drafted really good defensemen in your leagues and that's awesome, but just look at minutes for D if, if you want to go pick up, um, like someone mentioned Jason Demers today, that's been getting a bunch of blocks. You go and look at Jason Demers. He has set, he has 15 minutes, 14 minutes, 20 minutes. It's like, do you want to really pick up a player that's only playing like around 17 minutes a night? Probably not. Um, you're better off just finding a guy that's playing 21, 22 minutes like Justin Hole, who just sees more production because he's playing more minutes. So I just want to stress the importance of if you're going to make an acquisition, if you're going to pick up someone on waivers, just make sure you understand how many minutes they're playing and, and what minutes they're getting. Like Nils Hoaglander, uh, we saw him up at 21 minutes, first line power play, second line. Um, and that's the reason why his minutes are so high. So his production is only going to going to uh, increase if you see more minutes. There, there's a direct correlation between uh, production and minutes. And that's the one thing I want to stress is just minutes, minutes, minutes for everything. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with Mike. I'm, I'm going to just say a little word of caution here, though. You, you Again, you have to understand the caliber of player for me. And, and that's that's more of a, a determining factor in, in terms of my decision making, whether or not to pick up a player uh, based on necessarily their minutes. And again, it depends on your your league, like what when your ca my category uh, guys, I, I know like you you have to hit every category. So if you need a guy with that that blocks a lot um, it, and it's a necessity for your team because you're losing in in blocks every week or or you're down in the season, I get that. you you definitely want to fill your utility roles and we'll get to that in a second. but um, you want to make sure that this player isn't playing empty minutes, right? Like I look, I look at a guy like Joe Thornton, for example. Like you see that he's on the first line uh, for the Leafs, and I get like we we get questions all the time about him just because like he's playing on a very talented line with with Matthews and Marner. But again, Mike said like look at the minutes. Thornton, even though he's listed as the first line, he's not the same caliber player as say like a Jack Hughes is this year. Like you've you've seen him. He's he's currently like what six points right now in in four games for the devils so that's a guy that's also on a first line that may be similar in terms of minutes but is a more high caliber player than a joe thornton uh so just be wary of that as well you, you don't want to necessarily pick up like a guy like tage thompson who just because he's playing on the first line buffalo and getting 20 minutes a game uh, he's not going to see the same production as like as a jack Hughes, somebody who's who's talented right so Oh no, no. Uh, my my guys in in these like really deep pools where you're getting to to those third line players, 
uh, in in your drafts, you minutes is definitely a big part, especially when it comes to defense. Yeah, defense are, are really important. So you actually cut out there for like ten seconds. I'm oh, not no. sure what happened, <laughs> but um, I mean, it, I don't think it, it's too big of a deal. Um, all right, so moving on, streaming goaltender. So for people who don't know what streaming means, it's basically picking up a goaltender or a player for one night and then dropping them the next night. Um, and maybe these streamers are people you have on your team for a while if you get lucky. Um, but for goaltenders this year, I think it's a big issue in a lot of, of a lot of leagues where um, people are running into goaltenders they drafted that are underperforming. And Tristan Jerry is my example of taking some a little bit of heat for uh, my Tristan Jerry take, and I get it. Um, so I think the biggest thing to look for, and especially with the way the scheduling is in this new season, there's a lot of back-to-back games, so backup goaltenders are going to have a lot more value this year than they do in, than they did in previous years. And I think one thing you want to be doing is identifying the strength of the schedules. And we're going to come out with a tool uh, in our Patreon for schedule strength, and it'll help you identify when is a good time to pick up a goalie to stream. Um, and a good example of a goalie to stream is last night, Brian Elliott had a 40 save shutout. And he was going against this, a Sabres team that is coming on a back-to-back. They had a strong performance in Philly. Um, it, it was kind of an outlier performance because I do think Philly is one of the hardest teams to play against in hockey. And we, we knew Hart wasn't starting. So it would make sense to, if you had an empty spot in your bench or a, a goalie that you've recently picked up, to pick up uh, Brian Elliott for that one night. And he gives you a 40 save shutout. I mean, that's, again, an outlier performance, like I've mentioned uh, numerous times already. But... Um, if he's a high favorite in that game to win, it makes sense to pick him up and for him to give you the potential win and, and potentially aid with your goals against average and save percentage numbers. So I think it's backup goalies are definitely more important uh, this year than any year we've ever seen. And it's 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 worth it for sure to uh, have an empty spot in your bench to stream goaltenders this year. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Uh... I think the goalie aspect, especially with this season, is is the most interesting to follow and the one that's going to see the most variation in terms of, like Mike said, who gets the start every night. Like, there's just so many instances where teams are jam-packed and, like, have three games in, in four nights. So uh, definitely keep an eye on your goalies. I think if you don't have three goalies right now in your leagues, definitely pick up a third goalie, like a a strong backup like uh brian elliott's not a not a bad example maybe like uh yaroslav halak mm-hmm. on the bruins as well i know raska's had kind of a, a, a tough start to the season but it's it's just teams getting their their feet wet right now and i think uh the goalie rotation is definitely going to be something that you want to keep an eye on even if it's like mike said like streaming specific goalies in each week i think um finding your matchups especially with with goalies that are, are typically unloaned. Like I think Mackenzie Blackwood is a good example too. Uh, we've seen the Devils have a strong start already. So, uh, and he's been one of the contributing factors of that, putting up a, a fairly high save percentage in most of his games. So keep an eye on those unknown goalies, especially if they have a really good matchup um, throughout the week. Yeah, absolutely. And you can, you can look to stream players as well, um, but I, I don't think it's as as prominent in fantasy hockey than it is in other sports to stream players. I know um, from my baseball, my baseball fantasy experience that streaming players is a pretty common thing. Um, so moving on, um, monitoring injuries and then who's filling in. Um, and that's a big, it's going to be way, way more important to follow this later in the season. Um, we've already seen our first team with a COVID scare. I think uh, Tara Vinen and Slavin are both out. So that's an important thing that you're going to need to be focusing on uh, day in and day out. So um, the the good example right now I want to use is Anthony D'Angelo. So we don't really know too, too much of what's going on with him right now, but we know he is out for uh, however long period of time. And now Adam Fox moves into the top power play unit. So Fox is going to see more minutes. He's going to see more opportunity. And he might be someone that is, is lower owned in your league and might be available or someone that um, maybe a player in your league isn't aware that is, is now getting a jump in minutes because of D'Angelo's absence. So that's something you want to really monitor. Um, there's a lot of potential to pick up players that are, that are filling in. Uh, we saw Nils Hoaglander this year. Uh, someone that you guys uh, love that I talk about is Rasmus Anderson. But, I mean, he's someone that you could pick up off your free agency um, that could potentially provide you with, you know, 10, 15 power play points this year, maybe 25, 30 assists. I mean, that's, I'm kind of being optimistic. But that, that's just something you guys need to be monitoring every day. 
Um, and it's going to happen more and more with uh, especially all this, these COVID concerns and if there's positive tests because you're going to see important players that are going to be out and then maybe someone that's playing in the bottom, bottom six or the top nine um, that will fill in the top line role and get an increase in minutes, back to the minutes thing again, uh, where maybe someone is playing only 14 a night and now is seeing 18, 19 and, and their production increases. And if you guys have watched my uh, must own wingers video when I talked about Kevin Fiala last year, he played 14 minutes a night for the first half and then moved up to like 17, 18 minutes a night. And his production went from half a point per game to over a point per game. And I'm not saying Fiala is a point per game player, but it just shows what the increase in minutes can actually do for a player. So um, just make sure you're always monitoring injuries, monitoring who's who's moving around lines. Um, I had someone in my chat in my recent stream mention they noticed Don Skoy moved up to the second line with Burakovsky out and he had a, an assist. So um, that's someone that would have been a potentially empty spot or someone that would have gave you a, a zero points has now given you an assist. And as long as Burakovsky's out, he's someone you can uh, roster because he's getting the minutes. He's on that deadly power, or the deadly Colorado team, uh, probably the second power play. Um, and that's just something you could, you need to look uh, deep into, I think. There's a lot of resources you can use. Uh, our Twitter, we provide uh, as many injury updates as we can, um, as well as if you just hop onto Daily Faceoff, you can see all the injuries and all the new line changes. Yeah, I think uh, in general this year, especially, it's it's really important just to to keep an eye on on what's going on in the league, right? Like, uh, especially with like the COVID thing and and the taxi squad this year, you you see teams changing their lineup a lot more frequently than you would in in, in a regular circumstance or a regular season with eighty two games, right? Especially because it's it's very very condensed and it's only fifty six games. Like you're gonna see a lot of variation in in players and goalies as well. So just like make sure that you keep an eye on, especially if you have money in your pools, right? Like, and you're trying to be competitive. Like I know uh, in in Mike and I's pool, uh, Jack Hughes already got claimed within the first uh, two games of him him being successful with the Devils, right? Uh, so it's 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 something that you you have to watch uh, very diligently and 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 be effective in the sense that. You, uh, you like those types of changes that you see in lineups are, are going to pay dividends for you in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely important because there is going to be a lot of, a lot of people out this year, especially goaltenders. This is just going to be a, it's, it's a whole different year this year for what's every, everything that's going on. Um, even with the COVID thing, right? Like Dallas hasn't even played a game yet. So we don't know how that team's going to operate. Carolina yeah. is now running into troubles, right? So it's, it's like, how does it impact these teams? The other thing that you want to watch is, is trades, right? Like I'm hearing rumbles of, of flurry getting moved right now. How does that impact teams, right? If you can jump in and get on him early, especially if he goes to a team, like I'm, I'm hearing Buffalo potentially. So that might be an option. Yeah. Um, just to pick him up because he's he's going to get a lot of starts, right, if he's playing on a team like Buffalo. So Yeah, yeah, and, like, we're going to do our best here at Fantasy Puck to keep you guys updated on the injuries, keep you guys updated on uh, who's moved up to the top power play unit or the first pairing, um, and that, that's just going to be something that we're going to try and our best to do, but um, it's not going to be every day where we're making a video saying, hey, Sam Reinhardt's on the first line now. Um, so that's just up to you guys to monitor. I think it's something that can definitely give you a, an edge over your competition every night, every matchup you're in. Um, and then, yeah, for the Hughes example too, uh, we knew that he sure was going to be out. Uh, I think I read recently that they don't know any timetable for when he's back. And with him being out, that means not only Hughes moves up, but Pavel Zaka now moves up, who is a sixth overall pick and is now playing on the second line. He's playing 20 minutes a night. Um, so there's definitely an impact and something you need, you guys need to all be watching every night. And, uh, Again, we're going to do our best to keep you guys informed on who's injured and who's moving up and, and any major changes to any lines. Um, so the final thing we want to talk about here is just understanding your league scoring and the missing pieces on your team. And what we mean by this is you may, maybe you just drafted uh, all the highest ADP players and those guys are all uh, high point getters. They're all 70 point players but they don't shoot a lot, they don't hit a lot, they don't block a lot. So now you're losing your matchups every week because your hits are significantly lower than your goals, your assists, uh, and same goes for your blocks and shots. So I think uh, each week when you finish your matchup, you need to go through your team and identify what you were lacking. So if your team lost in blocks and shots, why? Are, are, are your players not shooting enough? Um, are your players kind of underperforming? 
or do you just lack shot production on your team? And that's something you need to understand because that will help you uh, win your matchups. So in my $50 keeper league, I took a lot of high shot, high hit players. And in my first matchup this week, I dominated the shot category, dominated the hit category. And then, you know, the goals and, and assists came because my players are, um, you know, if they're shooting the puck on net, that means they're getting a lot of scoring chances, a lot of opportunities. So I think the biggest thing for you, for you guys is to just make sure you identify the flaws in your team. Um, and I know you guys do ask me a lot of questions uh, in terms of, you know, identify what's wrong with my team. Um, and sometimes it's, it's a little hard for me because, I mean, I, I'm not monitoring all 300 players in the league at once. So it's a, it's a, it's a little bit more difficult for me to, to go in and, and dissect your team to see uh, maybe who's not hitting as much or who's not providing you with, with the blocks you're looking for. But um, from what I've seen, uh, everyone's done a really good job at identifying um, some players that are having a little bit outlier seasons right now. I know I've had a bunch of messages about Adam Larson going back to his crazy block numbers and his shot production has been relatively good. And that's awesome to hear because that means that you guys are monitoring your free agency. Um, you're, you're finding guys that are, are blocking and shooting that are going to help your team's peripherals. It's not all about points in some leagues. Some some leagues are points leagues, um, and, that, and, and I totally get it. But um, for people that are in leagues with hits, uh, blocks, and shots uh, as categories as well, it's definitely important to understand uh, w what you're missing on your team. And, and you can simply identify that through your, your first week's matchup or if you guys are in like like a season long where there's no head to head every week, um, you should be able to see what what category you're lacking in and uh, go out and look and, and, and look to make a trade or, or pick up a player that will help boost your category each week. Yeah, I think if you have if you have these teams that are like, OK, you have like a McKinnon, you have a Kyle Connor, you have a, a Patrick Line, like those are three guys on your team that are going to get a hell of a lot of shots and a lot of goals so you don't need to pick up another like high volume shooter or another high volume score like look at potentially hitting another category like if blocks or assists maybe somebody that likes to to, to move the puck a lot um and and not have that high shot total but will get you those categories like mike said that your team are, are lacking right it, it, it's all about considering like like mike said what your team is missing how you're going to improve that each week with uh these these streaming players uh and and just potentially like make trades and and work with people in your league i think the people in points leagues as mike talked about earlier that you don't want to panic move anybody that that has typically had a really productive season right like so if you find guys in your league that are moving people like Pedersen and malk and see if you can jump on that and 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 maybe add a player that's had a really hot start right um like a jack hughes for example uh, you just gotta play the the league to the categories that you have and, and like mike said like just understand like what your team is missing every week it, it, you can't just dominate two categories you're not gonna win the league every time like uh, head to head or anything like that season long it doesn't matter you have to hit every category so absolutely all right so that that concludes our just tips and strategies video um i know this is something new and something that you guys might not be used to i'm not sure how many of the people watching this have uh, tuned into the streams but this is kind of the layout we do for our uh, daily DraftKings streams but um if you guys enjoyed uh, th this kind of new segment we're going to get into a little bit um make sure you leave a comment let, let us know if you want to see more of this uh, we'd love to give you some advice i'd love for you guys to to pick our brains a little bit more um, there's definitely a lot out there that people aren't using and aren't uh, taking advantage of to put their teams uh, to the top each week and each year. Um, if you guys like the video, uh, please leave a like. Uh, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. We're going to be uh, producing a bunch of content moving forward. And uh, any any final notes here, Chris? Yeah, if you guys have any questions, I think the best way to probably reach us is is in the comment Mike comments. Mike does a, a good job of, of answering your guys' questions in the comment. But if you want a more like direct, immediate answer, definitely join our Discord. I think there's a lot of discussion going on there as well. We've got some some pretty knowledgeable people in there from the fantasy puck team as as well as you guys as well. We we love hearing like these these questions with you coming to us like who should i pick up who should i drop is this a good trade like we're we're here to help you guys at the end of the day so uh definitely join our discord and, and join in the discussion there as well and become a this part of this fancy puck community that that we're building right here 
Awesome. Awesome. Also, we've uh, we've recently launched our Patreon. We have our ESPN and Yahoo projections, all of our goaltender projections, uh, everything for our DraftKings stuff. If you've seen the stream, uh, we have a really awesome template on our Google Sheets. You guys know I love my Excel sheets, um, as well as we're going to be releasing a, a podcast each week for you guys. Um, so just a little bit of bonus content um, helps you support our channel. Um, and it, it'll probably provide you guys with some support that uh, maybe you guys aren't getting with with proper projections and everything. Um, so yeah, head over to our Patreon if you guys want to support our channel, if you like the content, uh, and if you want some exclusive and, and premium tools uh, for your fantasy teams. Uh, thanks everyone for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.